So I'm sitting here mulling over the fact that I have no idea what I want to do for this episode. And it's Tuesday at 3 p.m. when the episode sometimes is uploaded by now. And I think I'm just going to gorilla style with this and talk about what I'm thinking, how I'm feeling, what's on my mind right now. And it could be a mess, could be not. I hope you enjoy it either way. Style, here we are in the garage. I have a microphone in front of me. It's not plugged into anything. It's a rainy day after a beautiful sunny day yesterday. It's now a rainy day here in Indianapolis. And I'm sitting in my garage filming this podcast when it should already be uploaded. <laughs> so I went to Amsterdam a couple weeks ago. We've covered that and I feel like I've been a broken record talking about it probably too much, but it was a great time and I very much enjoyed it. So I probably talked about it the right amount. Anyways, that happened two weeks ago, and since then, time has passed, obviously. Well, two weeks ago, a week and a half ago. Since then, time has passed, and things have happened, and I have tried to get back into the regular course of life, and it's been, I don't want to say difficult, but I've had my challenges with it. Coming back from vacation, you always have to tune back in to what's going on around you, the world around you, what's going on, what's happening and get back in the swing of things. And it's not the easiest, always, especially when you're a senior in college and you're about to graduate. It has really tuned up the senioritis for me. I really do not want to do much of anything related to school, unless it's fun. Also, right before I left for spring break, there was some drama that went on around my house and in my house. And I didn't want to deal with it at that time because spring break was coming up and I was just trying to get out of town and be on my own. And I did that and I got exactly what I wanted out of the trip, a break, I mentioned that. But I come back and I don't have to really deal with those things that happen, but um, uh, I do at the same time. And that's been difficult and without going, without sparing too, without sparing too many details, um, it's, been, it's been troublesome. Um, what, dude, what am I talking about? This gorilla method. I'm doing that classic thing where I uh, can't make a decision, so I'm getting very frustrated with myself and going in circles and bouncing back and forth, and it's a painful process, and I'm, I'm realizing why I had all of this stress just going on in circles and circles and circles before I left for spring break. I had the issues of my friends, my house where I'm living at, school and doing the things I needed to get to do to graduate, and the jobs that come after school. I said out when I came back from spring break that all I have left is get a job. That's the only thing I really have left to do. That's the last thing I really have to do to check off my list. And that's true. But I'm quickly losing sight of that. Not of the size of the fact that I have to have a, get a job. That's very much in my area. I'm paying attention to it. But I'm just back in that, that circle of... of balancing friendships while trying to focus on myself and have fun in the current moment while also looking ahead to job post school. It's incredibly frustrating. <laughs> and uh, I have nothing profound to say at this moment. I have nothing that I think is of any value to you or any value to me. And it is very frustrating. And I don't know what to talk about. And I feel like I have to deliver this some sort of high quality broadcast to the people in the world when in reality, 15 to 35 people will watch this episode and realistically, most of them will probably watch mm, first couple minutes and then be click off. That's the realistic analysis of my audience. But despite that, I still feel this immense pressure to deliver a high quality product. And maybe that, that's probably a good thing, keeps the pressure on me, but it's frustrating. And I'm realizing as I'm saying it's frustrating and going on about how I somehow work my way back into the circle that nobody wants to hear about. I have failed to address the fact that I have a freaking mullet, dog. I have a mullet on my head and it has not been documented on the podcast yet. So I guess that's what this episode is going to be about. So I came back from spring break and I was in this high of uh, life is great. You can express yourself however you want to. They, they do things differently in European. Oh, I wish I was European. Ooh, spring break, fun. Uh, I don't want to come back to school. But I've now come back to school and started to, again, get into the swing of things of sorts. 
but I wanted to keep things fun and I needed haircuts. My hair was just getting super long. And when I went to the hair cutter place, Gray Clips and Broad Ripple, I said, can we try out a mullet? Can we just see what that looks like? Can we give it a, give it a, a little look? And she put it on my head and she shaved, my, shaved the sides. I got a little shave the side ears and it's blended a little bit into the hair up top. And I have a mullet now because I like the look of it and I decided to go with it. Now I will admit that I don't think the, the mullet is a proper representation of my being, of my aura, but uh, at the current moment it feels right. I, I can feel the, the, the clock winding down on my, my time as a mullet man, but I'm trying to savor it while I have it because there's a certain energy. There's a certain energy that comes with having a mullet in the presence or presentation that that allows you to give off. I don't think I fully identify with a mullet. I don't think it's totally me, but I will say this is probably the best it's looked since I've had it. Uh, I've gotten, I, I, I believe I mainly got it just to see the reactions of those people around me and how they felt about me having a mullet because I've had the same haircut since senior year of high school. I got, I changed it ever so slightly in high school then and as, a, as I was a senior starting in this new chapter and now I've decided to change it up again four years later as a senior. Questionable decision, I might add. Uh, questionable reactions from some people. I would say generally the, the response is sort of a, hmm, okay, I mean, all right, you have a mullet, I see you. Because it's not, it's not an, uh, an elegant, everlasting, flowing, beautifully flowing, dramatic mullet. It is just a mullet. It is simply the mullet hairstyle. Got it long on top. It's supposed to have business in the front. It's a little bit of a party. And then we got the party in the back. I think my mullet's life cycle is, is, is not long. It will not be long lived, but it's been fun while I've had it for sure. And I, I've enjoyed the new hair look. So I think that at least opens me up to the idea of trying new hairstyles because I was getting tired of my hair. It looked good, it fit me, but What's the point of living if you're not living, you know what I mean? What's the point of living if you're not pushing the barrier, trying new things, getting a little wet, wicky, wacky, and wild every now and then? I, I like to be a person that does that a lot, and it's not always easy to do it, but uh, the mullet is one way that I have been able to do that recently, and just let me tell you, I have cherished it. I don't love it. I, I do like it, though. I, I mainly believe I got it just for the attention it draws to me. Unfortunately, I have been somewhat disappointed by the uh, occasional lack of response from those around me. A lot of people, some people have taken it and just says, I got a new haircut. And I was hoping for a bigger reaction out of them, but, eh, you know, I can't make them react to my hair the way I want them to. You just gotta let it happen. My aunts, I went home this past weekend and they had a particularly funny reaction, just kind of grossed out by it a little bit. Uh, it's been a, it's been a fun fun to see the spectrum and where where how everybody stands on my hair. I have a mullet, people. The first the first few days I had a mullet, that was what I was just kind of saying over and over again. Like, I would just be sitting there, you know, in a conversation or whatever, and just think, I have a mullet. Wait, do I have a mullet, dude? I freaking have a mullet on my head. I feel like the world kind of collectively expects less from me with a mullet. It's kind of nice. Uh, uh, I've obviously projected that on my own because the world expects an equal amount of me. But it feels like if I were to fuck up or get bad grades or make mistakes or, or uh, uh, make a questionable comment or whatever, when you have a mullet, it's not like you don't get stigmatized or whatever. You don't get attacked as much for it because it came from the guy with the mullet. Who else is going to come from, you know? The mullet makes me a wild card if I wasn't already one. and. That I like. I like the, 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 the spice and flair it brings to my life, but it's also not the most beautiful haircut. I, I don't, I'm not the prettiest with it on. I will say again, this is probably the best it's looked, so take it for what it is and what it looks like now because you're seeing the best of it, ladies and gentlemen. So the mullet experiment has lasted about a week now. I, I think it may last about another week. I don't want to have to pay for another haircut. We'll see how that goes, but... You know, it's that I made this decision, so I have to deal with it. And uh, I hope you have enjoyed this episode of me just talking, which is the podcast every single week, but this one especially. I have a mullet. Don't know how I feel about it, but we're rolling with it, and it's what I got, and I kind of like it, but it's, it's, you, you never know. If you have any opinions about mullets, let me down in the comments or wherever you want to. Thank you so much for watching this week's episode. I apologize for it being a mess. 
Um, but I don't have much to report. I mean, March Madness is going on, but I have been so detached from that, so not much to share. I hope you've enjoyed this week's episode. I've been your host, Matthew Stein. You've been fantastic as always. And I will see you in next week's episode of the Procrastinate Podcast, episode 84. Hopefully with a guest. We shall see. If you took the time out of your day to listen to this episode, I appreciate you. See you next week.